is what is the equation of motion for this harmonic oscillator. What we want to find out is how the displacement of this harmonic oscillator varies with time, x of t, x as a function of time. Earlier, we found that the resultant, which is also called here the restoring force, is minus kx. On the other hand, Newton's second law tells us that the resultant and the acceleration of a body in motion are connected by the well-known equation f equals ma. Here f is minus kx, and thus we can write ma equals minus kx, or ma plus kx equals zero, or a plus k over mx equals zero. We want to determine what function of time x of t satisfies this equation. For those of you who are familiar with differential calculus, you might know that the acceleration a is the second derivative of displacement x, and thus the equation a plus k over mx equals zero turns into the following differential equation. The second derivative of x plus k over mx equals zero. From here the solution x of t can be found and it is exactly what we were looking for, the equation of motion for this harmonic oscillator. However, in this presentation I'm not going to follow this route, so don't worry if you don't know much about differential calculus. We're going to refill the solution to the equation on the screen by using some experimental observations. First, a little about the experimental setup. I am using a data logging system attached to a notebook computer in order to track the vertical position of the oscillator. The Sonic Ranger sensor is a device that sends out a series of sound waves that bounce off an object and then return to Ranger. This allows it to determine the distance to the object. As the oscillator moves up and down, the distance from it to the Ranger is shown on the screen. The graph, which is the visual representation of the equation of motion, looks strikingly similar to a sinusoidal. That means that our equation of motion contains either the sine or the cosine function. A similar graph can be obtained for a simple pendulum. In this case, a rotation sensor is used to measure the angular position of the pendulum as it swings. The angular deviation is proportional to the displacement from the equilibrium position, and therefore the function that describes the displacement is similar to what is shown on the screen. Again, the graph is very similar to that of a sine or a cosine. In what follows, I'm going to consider the cosine function. The analysis is similar if the sine is used. So our solution for x of t should contain cosine of t in some form. As we can easily imagine, when the body oscillates faster, the crests of the cosine function are closer together and therefore we have to somehow account for this experimental fact in our equation. Therefore I'm introducing a constant omega which is related to how fast the object oscillates. Cosine of omega t. In addition, the oscillation can start at any position and at t equals zero the displacement can have different values. To account for that, I'm introducing another constant, phi, or phi, so when t equals zero, the displacement can be non-zero, cosine of omega t plus phi. Of course, the cosine function can only have values between plus one and minus one, but the displacement can have any value. Therefore, I'm introducing another constant, x zero, in my solution x of t equals x0 cosine omega t plus phi. And this is the equation of motion for a harmonic oscillator. x0, called the amplitude, is the maximum magnitude of the displacement, omega is called angular frequency, and phi, or phi, is called phase constant or initial phase angle. For our particular setup, of a mass m attached to a spring of spring constant k, it is fairly easy to show that this function is a solution for the equation a plus k over m x equals zero, if omega is square root of k over m. And this is the equation we were looking for. 
it tells us how the displacement of a mass m oscillating while attached to a spring that has a spring constant k changes with time x equals x0 cosine of omega t plus phi where omega is the square root of k over m x0 and phi can be determined from the initial conditions or in other words they are related to the manner in which the oscillator is set in motion As a harmonic oscillator undergoes a periodic motion, we can ask ourselves what is the period capital T of such motion. What I mean by period T is the time it takes for the oscillator to execute a complete cycle of motion. In simple words, it is the time for one complete oscillation, for example from one extreme to the other and back. Now that we have the equation of motion x equals x0 cosine of omega t plus phi, we can determine capital T by taking into account the fact that the periodicity of the cosine function is 2 pi. In other words, cosine of an angle equals to the cosine of that angle plus 2 pi. Of course the angle needs to be expressed in radians. Capital T is the shortest time satisfying the condition x of t equals x of t plus capital T. Bear in mind that during one oscillation, an oscillator has the same displacement twice. What capital T refers to is the time interval between the successive moments in time when the oscillator has the same displacement and it is moving in the same direction, or in other words, the displacement x and the velocity v have the same value at time t and time t plus capital T. x equals x0 cosine of omega t plus phi equals x0 cosine of omega t plus capital T plus phi. From here, cosine of omega t plus phi equals cosine of omega t plus phi plus omega capital T, and from here, omega t equals 2 pi, and t equals 2 pi over omega. Immediately from here, we can define the frequency f. As the period capital T is the time it takes for one oscillation, Frequency f is the number of oscillations per unit time. Let's say that an oscillator completes n oscillations in a time interval delta t. To calculate the period, we divide delta t by n and we find the time for one oscillation. If we want to find out frequency, we divide n by delta t and we get the number of oscillations per second. t equals delta t over n f equals n over delta t, and thus f equals 1 over t. In other words, frequency f is the reciprocal of period t, f equals 1 over t. It is quite remarkable that the period does not depend on x0, the amplitude of oscillation. The video on the screen shows the same oscillator oscillating with two different amplitudes. The periods of the two oscillating motions are the same. Now once we have the equation of motion x equals x0 cosine of omega t plus phi, we can find out how the velocity of an oscillator and its acceleration change in time. The expressions for v and a are shown below v equals minus omega x0 sine of omega t plus phi and a equals minus omega squared x0 cosine of omega t plus phi. Again, for those of you familiar with differential calculus, you can derive them yourselves. By differentiating x equals x0 cosine of omega t plus phi, we can find the expression for the velocity. Further, by taking the derivative of velocity with respect to time, we can find an expression for the acceleration. Comparing the top and the bottom equations, we can write a equals minus omega squared x. This equation tells us that for a harmonic oscillator, the magnitude of acceleration is proportional to the displacement, but the two vectors have opposite directions. This is of course something that we expected, as the restoring force and displacement are proportional and in opposite directions.
graph on the screen shows the displacement, velocity and acceleration as functions of time. Let's concentrate on the two extreme points and the equilibrium position. At the top, the displacement is at its maximum and it is directed upwards. The acceleration is also at its peak value as the spring reaches its maximum compression but its direction is downwards because the restoring force is pushing downwards. At the same location the velocity is zero as the oscillator is changing direction. When the oscillator reaches its lowest position the situation is very similar. Displacement at its maximum directed downwards, acceleration at its maximum pointing upwards and the velocity is zero. When the oscillator passes through its equilibrium position, the displacement is obviously zero. The acceleration is zero as the spring is neither stretched nor compressed, and the velocity is at its maximum. Let's now sum up the key points in today's podcast. Simple harmonic motion is a type of periodic motion executed by an object subject to a force called the restoring force that is proportional to the displacement from equilibrium position but opposite in sign. A simple harmonic oscillator can be constructed using a spring of spring constant k and a small object of mass m. The equation of motion of such an oscillator is x equals x0 cosine of omega t plus phi, where x0 is its amplitude, omega is angular frequency, and phi is the phase constant. The period of such an oscillator is t equals 2 pi over omega, and the frequency is f equals 1 over t, which is omega over 2 pi. T does not depend on the amplitude of oscillation, x0. Velocity and acceleration are given by the following equations. V equals minus omega x0 sine of omega t plus phi, A equals minus omega squared x0 cosine of omega t plus phi. For a harmonic oscillator, the relationship between the displacement and acceleration is A equals minus omega squared x. For a more in-depth look into simple harmonic motion and some of its applications, watch the second part of this podcast. See you next time.